This is Professor Wick from RN2 Professors with a review video for you on pulmonary embolisms. I'm going to review five questions on pulmonary embolisms. These questions focus on the different phases of the nursing process for patients with this condition. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and how to get the correct answer. Then explain the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers to give you a deeper understanding. Let's review. Here's our first question. Which nursing assessment data support that the client has experienced a pulmonary embolism? Number one, calf pain with dorsiflexion of the foot. Number two, sudden onset of chest pain and dyspnea. Number three, left-sided chest pain and diaphoresis. Number four, bilateral crackles and low-grade fever. This is an analysis question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. To answer this question, you need to know what the expected assessment data or signs and symptoms that you would see with a patient with PE. This is what you'll look for in the answers. Let's read through them again. Number one, calf pain with dorsiflexion of the foot. Number two, sudden onset of chest pain and dyspnea. Number three, left-sided chest pain and diaphoresis. Number four, bilateral crackles and low-grade fever. The correct answer is number two. A sudden onset of chest pain and dyspnea are common signs of a pulmonary embolism. So what makes the other answers incorrect? Number one is an example of a Holman sign, which is an indicator of a DVT. Number three is eliminated because it references left-sided pain, which is a sign of an MI. Number four is a possible sign or symptom for pneumonia, but is nonspecific for a PE. Here's question number two. The client diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism is in the intensive care department. Which assessment data warrant immediate intervention from the nurse? Number one, client's ABGs are pH 7.36, PAO2 95, PACO2 38, and HCO3 of 24. Number two, the client's telemetry exhibits occasional premature ventricular contractions or PVCs. Number three, the client's pulse oximeter reading is 90%. Number four, the client's urinary output for the 12-hour shift is 800 milliliters. This is an analysis question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. Like our last question, this one is also looking for assessment data. However, in this question, it is looking for abnormal or life-threatening data instead of common signs and symptoms. The keywords that tell us this are immediate intervention. Look for abnormal or life-threatening assessment data as we read through the questions again. Number one, the client's ABGs are pH 7.36, PAO2 95, PACO2 38, HCO3 24. Number two, the client's telemetry exhibits occasional premature ventricular contractions, or PVCs. Number three, the client's pulse oximetry reading is 90%. Number four, the client's urinary output for a 12-hour shift is 800 milliliters. The correct answer is number three. A normal pulse oximeter reading is 93 to 100%. A reading of 90 indicates it's equal to an arterial oxygen level of around 60 and indicates severe hypoxia, which requires immediate intervention. The other answers can be ruled out because they are not abnormal or life-threatening. Number one shows a normal ABG. 
Number two is not unusual for any patient to have. And number four is a normal urine output. Here's question three. The nurse is preparing to administer the oral coagulant warfarin or Coumadin to a client who has a PT, PTT of 22 and 39 and an INR of 2.8. What action should the nurse implement? Number one, assess the client for abnormal bleeding. Number two, prepare to administer vitamin K. Number three, administer the medication as ordered. Number four, notify the HCP to obtain an order to increase the dose. This is an application question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. Anticoagulation therapy is a mainstay for the treatment of pulmonary embolisms. To answer this question, you'll have to apply your knowledge of lab values. The answer to the question is based on what the lab values in the stem are showing. Review the lab values and read through the questions again. Number one, assess the client for abnormal bleeding. Number two, prepare to administer vitamin K. Number three, administer the medication as ordered. Number four, notify the HCP to obtain an order to increase the dose. The correct answer is number three. This is a therapeutic level. The nurse can administer the medication. Here's why the rest of the answers can be eliminated. Number one, would not be expected in a patient with this INR. Number two is the antidote for an overdose of anticoagulant, and the INR does not indicate this. Number four, there is no need to increase the dose because the result is within the therapeutic range. Question number four. The nurse identified the client problem, decreased cardiac output, for the client diagnosed with a pulmonary embolus. Which intervention should be included in the plan of care? Number one. Monitor the client's arterial blood gases. Number two, assess skin color and temperature. Number three, check the client for signs of bleeding. Or number four, keep the client in the Trendelenburg position. This is an analysis question in the diagnosis phase of the nursing process. The keywords in this question are decreased cardiac output, which is the heart's decreased ability to pump blood. To answer this question, you need to determine what answer addresses that problem. With that in mind, let's read through the answers again. Number one, monitor the client's arterial blood gases. Number two, assess skin color and temperature. Number three, check the client for signs of bleeding. And number four, keep the client in Trendelenburg position. The correct answer is number two. This assessment data monitors tissue perfusion, which evaluates for decreased cardiac output. Decreased blood in the extremities results in cyanosis and cold extremities. You can eliminate the other answers because number one is related to impaired gas exchange. Number three is for a patient with high risk of bleeding. And number four is contraindicated because this position would increase difficulty of breathing for the patient. Here's our final question. Which nursing interventions should the nurse implement for a client diagnosed with a pulmonary embolus who is undergoing thrombolytic therapy. Select all that apply. Number one, keep protamine sulfate readily available. Number two, avoid applying pressure to venipuncture sites. Number three, assess for overt and covert signs of bleeding. Number four, avoid invasive procedures and injections. 
And number five, administer stool softeners as ordered. This is an application question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. This is also a select all that applies question. All interventions should address possible adverse reactions from the drug. As you read through the answers, determine if they fit the question. Look at them individually. Do not group them together. Think of each one as a true or false. Number one, keep protamine sulfate readily available. Number two, avoid applying pressure to venipuncture sites. Number three, Assess for overt and covert signs of bleeding. Number four, avoid invasive procedures and injections. Number five, administer stool softeners as ordered. The correct answers are one, three, four, and five. Thrombolytic therapy is ordered to help dissolve the clot resulting in a PE. Therefore, all nursing interventions should address bleeding tendencies. Number one is the antidote used to reverse the effects of the anticoagulant. Number three, all signs of bleeding should be assessed for. Number four, invasive procedures increase the risk of bleeding. And number five, Stool softeners are used to prevent straining, which could cause bleeding from hemorrhoids. Number two is the only answer that we didn't pick, and that is because we would want to hold pressure on a venipuncture site. That's all for this review. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, check out the others in the series and click like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified for new videos that are posted.